Hey guys, so if you do want to monitor your Linux server with a Zabbix, basically you need just a couple of things. First of all, you need a Zabbix server and don't worry, it is absolutely free. Uh, open source product that you can download at any time and install it just in a couple of minutes. If you don't know how to do that, just uh, search into YouTube how to install the Zabbix server and you will also find my video. And the second thing that you need is you need to watch this video till the end. It will not take more than again just 10-ish minutes and you will learn how you can set up your Linux server monitoring and it doesn't matter what sort of distribution are you using. So first of all considering that you already installed the latest Zabbix server which in my case is 5.4.3 and if at the moment you're watching this video there is already some newer version let's say the 6.0 don't worry, just download and install the newest version. It's going to be fine. You will not miss anything. So the next thing that we need, we need to log in on the Linux machine that we actually are planning to monitoring. And in my case, it is Oracle Linux 8 machine um, installed locally uh, on my virtual, virtual Oracle box. So yeah, we're going to monitor it. There are a couple of ways how you can monitor your Linux machine. And again, it doesn't matter what sort of applications or services you're running on it. Uh, Basically, you can always go with agentless monitoring, which means that you don't have to install anything on your Linux server, or you can go with a Zabbix agent option, which is a lot easier and will provide you with, with a lot of metrics out of the box without any customization. So you don't need to create any your own checks to receive some sort of the data. If you are afraid about a security, you shouldn't. You can watch a lot of, again, my videos about how you can secure your Zabbix agent using the built-in security features such as encryptions or the whitelist and the blacklist of the items that will be executed on the particular server. Zabbix agent also gives you an option to choose the com communication between the server and the agent, may it be the active or the passive, so you can determine the direction of the communication. Will all the connections be outgoing from the Linux server that you are monitoring or will those be incoming from the Zabbix server to the Linux server again which you are monitoring. When all the choices are made and you already decided which um, connection method you're going to use, you know that you're going to use the Zabbix agent. There are a couple of ways how you can actually install it. First of all, you can go just to the Zabbix.com download section and you will find a Zabbix agents. So this is the place where you can download the pre-compiled, pre-installed agents. Just download them, copy paste or with an SSH Sage or whatever to your Linux server that you're planning to monitor and install it. Another option is if you have an internet access um, from the Linux server that you're planning to monitoring, you can just add a repository, official repository of the Zabbix, and then just yum install an Zabbix agent. This is a very lightweight software, lightweight agent, so installation will take only a couple of seconds assuming that the internet connection is good and also there is no complicated uh, configuration to be done. When the agent is installed on your server, you need to open its configuration file, which is always by default stored in the Etsy Zabbix, Zabbix underscore agent D uh, dot conf. And you'll find quite a lot of parameters, but don't worry, we don't need uh, most of them. The only parameters that we are looking for are the server and this parameter means um, which, from which IP addresses our Zabbix agent is going to accept connections. So here in this parameter, you want to list IP address of your Zabbix server. Since my Zabbix server is running on the same, um, same machine, uh, where my agent, I will leave the local host and also I will add external IP address of my virtual machine simply because of my network specifics, which is 182.168.68.4. And then we need two additional parameters, uh, which is server active. There we go, the server active, where we also can see IP address, and I will add uh, my external address here as well, and also the host name. And host name by default is set to the Zabbix server. So three parameters, server, server active, and a host name. And remember initially we talked about like this, you are able to choose direction of the communication, maybe the passive or the active. So here we go, like the server parameter, 
this one is responsible only for the passive check. So only for those cases when the Zabbix server will connect to your Linux machine agent and poll for some sort of the metrics. This, however, server active and the host name is responsible for the active checks only. And what is important here, so here, of course, we can have IP address from which agent will accept connections. And in the server active, those are IP addresses to which agent will try to connect and request what sort of data do I have to monitor and then the second parameter for verification is a host name so host name in this case in any case when you're configuring active checks must match identically with the host name in the front end that you are created for this host to be monitored so if in this one we set it like training Linux host, then we must set it exactly like that in our uh, agent configuration file. So training Linux host. And remember, this is also case sensitive. After we made these changes in the config file, well, that's it. We can save it and we can start our agent. So systemctl start Zabbix agent. The last things to do are in the Zabbix frontend. So we can go back to the creation of our dummy host that we're going to be using for this uh, training purpose. So training Linux host, which is just as I specified in the config file, there must be at least one group um, for this host. That's a mandatory requirement. We need to add an agent interface Interface. And again, if we are planning to use a passive checks, then we need to define it here. Uh, if we are planning to use active checks, then interface is optional. So remember, this interface, uh, Zabbix agent, is for passive checks only. Monitored by proxy? Well, in this case, not. So we're monitoring it straight with a Zabbix server. And then, like, okay, we can add a host. But we see that there are no items, there are no triggers, and uh, the items are exactly determining what sort of the metrics we will be collecting from our Linux server. So to start a monitoring, actually, and start to collect some data, we just need to open the host, go to the templates, and search for Linux. And you will find quite a lot of uh, official, out-of-the-box available templates um, officially created by the Zabbix and maintain it. So those will have quite a lot of items. So we can check the first one, Linux by the Zabbix agent. As I mentioned, there are quite a lot of uh, options also with the agent-less monitoring, as example with SNMP, but the agent will be most convenient, trust me. So when we've selected the template, just click update, and you see we immediately have 42 items, 14 triggers, and we have three discovery rules that will automatically discover all the block devices, all the mounted file systems, and all the network interfaces on your Linux machine. And based on discovery output, it will also automatically create the items to monitor these discovered entities. So when something will change, let's say a new file system will be added, it will also create a new items and start monitoring that um, file system. So right now, when we added a template, we created a host, we just need to wait a couple of uh, minutes and then we'll see this uh, ZBX icon green, which means that the monitoring is successful and we can check the latest data in the monitoring latest data. So after a minute, we can see that uh, the color turned to the green, which means the connection to the specified interface is successful and we can go to the monitoring latest data in our front end select our host uh, not Apache but it's from the Linux server so training Linux host uh, click apply the host group yes like this so and there we go we have quite a lot of items about a cpu like uh, memory cpu idle time uh, utilization interrupts per second number of cpus local time agent ping system uptime description boot time and all the other stuff after a while we will see that also our uh, our discovery started work and we can even speed that up so go to um discoveries on the host and click execute now on the block devices on the file systems and also on the network interfaces
And now if we will check on our hosts once again, we see that instead of 48 items, we have 68 items. And you can see that the new items were discovered from the specific host about the file systems, about uh, network interfaces. And again, we also should see at the moment uh, new data coming in. So this will show up in a minute or two. And uh, that's it. That's the easy way how you can monitor your Linux machines with a Zabbix absolutely for free. You don't need to spend a lot of money on the system resources for the Zabbix if you're planning to monitor only a couple of uh, Linux servers, Linux devices. So for just one single machine, you will be absolutely fine with just a Raspberry Pi installation. And if you have some sort of customization, some custom services, applications, or whatever that you also need to monitor, you can easily do that with a Zabbix. You can extend your items, uh, use the pre-processing, and you can learn all of that in my channel where we have a guide and tutorial videos basically on all of the functionality that you can find in the Zabbix. So thank you guys for watching. And and we'll see you in the next ones. Goodbye.